Name, lab instructor. What is the pH of 4.0 molar solution of catechol with a pKa of 9.45? Do you know the structure of catechol? Probably not. Does it matter? No. I'll draw it for you. We work with it quite a bit. student who's finishing a paper that he's going to submit on this molecule any day now. So it's got protons. Those can come off. One of them comes off with a pKa of 9.45, but you actually don't need to know that to be able to solve this problem, which is one of the nice things. You can get some crazy named protein. As long as you have the pKa, you're all right. I would start with the balanced equation, even if it's the generic one for an acid that you do A lot, or that you will do a lot. We would undo the pKa. And then, yeah, I'll go all ice on it. My daughter likes Frozen, as you do. Chemist watches that movie and thinks, what's getting warmer? Anybody? All right. No worries. No worries. Okay, there's my ice table. I only knew one thing to start, and that was the concentration of HA initially, 4.0. Well, we'll put those as zero. Reactants react, products are produced. Coefficients are all one from the balanced equation, but it's nice that I wrote that out, so I have my confirmation. 4.0 minus x, x, x. Is x small? Let's leave it small for now. When I get x, it will be, among at least one other thing, the concentration of H3O+. That's not the pH, but you could take the negative log of it and get the pH. I got that. Okay, a couple people got, a couple of people seem to have gotten it right. That's good. Question, Casey. So since the PKA was over seven, does that establish the catechol? Since the pKa is above 7, does that establish that it is a base? It does not. But does that mean that pKb is then 4.6-ish? Doesn't that mean that pKb you can get from the, they add up to 14? Yes. It is a weak acid. Two 
Why did I, so a question about the structure of the molecule. Why did I draw the molecule with what looks like a hydroxide attached? This we'll get to when we do the organic chapter, but the, I don't know why my pen is doing something funny here. If I draw it out, One of those protons falls off, so it doesn't behave like a hydroxide, even though it visually looks like one. We'll get to that. It's an organic acid. So you're just supposed to know that that was an acid. To be completely honest with you, I didn't think about it. Um, I would say it is within your right to ask if it doesn't seem clear. If it's supposed to be clear, I will say. If it's not, I will tack it on there. If these quizzes turn out really bad because everyone did it as a KB problem or half the class did it as a KB problem, we'll figure something out. We'll figure out a, we'll, we'll figure a mulligan out. Charlie? So if it's a, if it's a base, one is saying PKB, PKB is the phrase. So it's kind of a, it's only a clue if you already knew all of that. So it's not, I will not argue that it was super clear, but that is the language you should look for. So the Charlotte points out, you either want to PKB, or you want it to say PKA of the conjugate acid, which means like the other side. As I said, if, if this looks bad, we'll figure something out, don't worry about it. We'll be all right. Weak acid, mildly acidic. Was X small? Yes. Definitely. How check? Four point oh minus three point eight times ten to the minus five. Why oh, my pen is leaking today? Equals four point oh. The two sig figs doesn't change. Um, there are many, many potentially correct answers to four. Um, that's the way I was thinking about it in addition. Anyway. Okay. <coughs> Acids and bases. We did these. I've seen a lot of people working on their master in chemistry, having their notebooks or their slides open to this. I would too. This is one of these things that I'll give it to you on the exam. You can pull out the equation sheet and see. You will probably do these enough that you probably won't need it. Um, but it's still a nice way to practice. Uh, are there questions or thoughts or comments about these instructions? Things that would be more useful. Lewis, what we did earlier was Bronsted acidity, which basically has to do with protons. Are you donating a proton or are you taking a proton? I think, Bruce, you should come up with a type of acidity because I, yeah. Thank you, Bobby. Gelt's acid base, eh. okay, Branson. Yeah. Lewis acids and bases, you are looking for lone pairs. A Lewis acid, or an atom that is behaving as a Lewis acid, is acting as a Lewis acid, accepts a lone pair. What you need to look for is, is it a metal? Yes, then it's, a, then it's a Lewis acid in this context. If it's a non-metal, you need to look and draw out the Lewis dot structure. But you need to draw out the Lewis dot structure. Because if, it does, if you do that and it does not have a lone pair, then it is probably acting as a Lewis acid. 
really not too many atoms that do this, so you'll pick up the pattern recognition pretty quickly. Those bases are not metals that have lone pairs. Listen. I put up the rules of thumb for charge, but they're not they're not hard and fast. There are exceptions to those. So go with the lone pairs. What do they do? Well, acids and bases were born to get together. In the Bronsted or the Bronsted Lowry acidity we did before, they would transfer a proton. Acid gives it to the base. Here, it's a little, a little clingier. They share a lone pair. Lewis base donates the lone pair to Lewis acid, but it doesn't transfer completely. That's electric energy. Let's Unless you're told otherwise, you generally want to be concerned about what I would call the central atom. If you're asked about a molecule, nitrogen and ammonia. Lose base or lose acid? Base because, because it has a lone pair. Nitrogen. Column five. You just got to have five. One, two, three electrons, four, five. Lone pair. New space. Boron. Lone pair or no? No. No lone pair. So, do the acid. Why is that the case if boron's valence shell is already full? Uh, well, if it's neutral. Yeah. So what? Um, what? Often people will actually draw an arrow, but um, sometimes you'll just see it like this. Just not super subtle, but um, so a lone pair forms essentially a what's a type of bond. What is for some reason called a dative bond. really know what the origin of that phrase, but it means electrons are being donated from one to an acceptor and it forms a bond. And they stick. Yeah? What kind of bond is 
Uh, the word is dative, D-A-T-I-V-E. Yeah, you can move beyond my handwriting. I'm not going to draw all of the trimethylphosphines, but it's an iron complex with a bunch of phosphorus. What metal is acting as the Lewis acid? Iron. How did you know? Because it's a metal. When you see this one on the exam, you go, bam, 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 take points, keep moving. Yeah, it's a metal. Right? And what atom is acting over and over again as the Lewis base? Phosphorus. Yeah, phosphorus. And why? Because it has a lone pair and it's donating it. What if it has more than one lone pair? Still Lewis. Yeah, it's still Lewis base. Yep. Good. This forms much of the basis of what's called coordination chemistry, which is really, I guess, the behavior of metals in the presence of nonmetals. Uh, there is a whole chapter on that in the book. I think it's okay. Um, we'll try to squeeze a bit of that in later when we do biochem, because it shows up a lot uh, in enzymes in particular. Questions, thoughts about Lewis acid base? Metal? Lewis acid. Lone pair, Lewis base. Non-metal without a lone pair, Lewis acid, but you'll see that really there, there's only one of those that shows up with any frequency, and it's boron. That's Lewis acid base chemistry. Natalie asks, what about water? What about water? It has two lone pairs, so it certainly can act as a Lewis base. Give it to the old rabbit ears. Yeah. Could it act as a Lewis acid and accept a lone pair? Yeah, it kind of can. So if you had, let's say, another water, if you're, bless you, in liquid water, um, the hydrogen bond is often drawn as a dotted line, so let's do that. I tried, I, I usually fail, but I try to be specific and, and precise in language and say what atom is acting as Lewis acid base, because that's the only way. Is this molecule Lewis acid base equal to nothing? So it's behaving in a certain way. So 
If I have phrased the question properly and precisely, then it will be something like that. Uh, great question about water. Water is a crazy chemical because it can do so many things. So if it was on a test, you would say, with, like, when referring to oxygen, what is water? So if it were on an exam, I would try to refer to oxygen. I would try and be clear, and you, you should, if it's not clear, ask. For sure. I would, so I would try to phrase it in such a way that it were clear if I were asking about the oxygen or... Yeah. All right. I think in discussion section, probably most people got a bit of this about polyprotic and polybasic. A lot of words on this slide, but the polyprotic acids you really need to know are H3PO4, which is phosphoric. and H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. There's a question in Mastering Chemistry that asks you to write out the equilibria for phosphoric acid acting as an acid. And it's like a formatting nightmare because you got to tell it how to do the subscript, how to do the superscript, and you can't put a space in the wrong place. It gets mad. That's probably the single most popular question all semester for the homework resubmit. Um, and as always, I, I request that you give a reason you got it wrong, that one gets the most creative and colorful reasons. Okay, let's... Yeah, I go, I'll go back. I was gonna go down and make some space and actually do the second one, but yeah. Um, you need to be able to identify monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic, protic, and monobasic or dibasic, or I guess tribasic molecules. How do you know? Well, what's carbonic acid? Mono, di, or triprotic? Diprotic. How did you know? Because there's two protons, two hydrogens. That's right. What about phosphoric? Yes, yeah, triprotic. There are three. Um, you could conceivably get a tricky one with like hydrogens in there that don't come off. I'm not going to give you one of those. Um, that is a subtlety that, that does matter in organic chemistry, but we're not going to do that here. For now, you're looking at ions and counting protons. Is try the highest will go? Is try the highest you will go? Uh, it is the highest common. I have seen a four that's a reasonably common molecule, and I've seen a five, but they're not, they're not too many molecules that do that. And so you get to like proteins that are really big molecules, then you get out hundreds. That's the brain. We'll draw it in a second. So for a generic acid, we could use, well, for any acid, we could use the generic formula, the HA plus water. Um, you could do that three times for H3PO4 because you could imagine three different H's coming off. Forgo the phases for the sake of time. 
space. Uh, if I lose a proton to water from H3PO4, what am I left with? H2PO4 minus. Good. What if I took that molecule? And hit it with water again. Good. And what if I took that molecule? You get the idea. So H3PO4 was triprotic. What about H2PO4 minus? Yeah, diprotic. And HPO4 2 minus is monoprotic. In this case, the molecule on the left is the acid, and the molecule all the way on the right is the conjugate base. So we could describe their basicity. H2PO4 minus. Monobasic, dibasic, tribasic. One at the top. Well, how many protons could it take? One. Monobasic. And then you can follow from there. You are concerned with how many protons could it give or how many protons could it take. And any one molecule could act as either. If one's in the middle, H2PO4 minus, that's monobasic, but it's also that product. What kind of molecule, what class of molecule do you get a pKa for? A weak acid. You get a pKa for a weak acid. So when you get a number for a pKa, that's the negative log of an equilibrium process, the products of reactants for the acid. I would like to move all of this to the right. Let's see if I can do this. Is that gonna work? Kinda. Yeah. All right. If you want the pKa of acetic acid, and you're doing master in chemistry, you go to the you go to the book and you get the pKa. If you want it in real life, you go to Wikipedia. Because come on, you don't get a trouble in real life. Um. What if it's polyprotic though? So acetic acid has one proton. There's only one pKa. There's no question. I know where I'm finding. If I want the pKa for any of these intermediate molecules that are still could donate a proton, but it's not phosphoric acid, it used to be PO4, I would still go to the phosphoric acid Wikipedia page. You go to the most protonated state? And it will list all of them for you. Phosphoric acid wiki. Okay, a lot of stuff. Here in this data table on the right, I'm scrolling down, I'm looking for acidity or pKa. There, acidity and pKa. It has three pKa's listed. Lots of safe things. I'm impressed. That is not easy to do. 2.15, 7 7.2, and 12.32. This is one molecule. How come it's got three pKa's? Because it's triprotic, and they correspond to sequentially taking off those protons. 
Two point one five, seven point. Let's see if I can do this. The pKa corresponds to the HA the acid of whichever equilibrium you're looking at. If it's triprotic, you should have three equilibria, and you should have three pKa's. Will I give those to you? To, I mean, to do what? Uh, yeah, the more general answer is yes. Generally, I'll give you pKa's on the exam rather than have you look them up. Looking them up is a skill, but it's not one that I'm particularly interested in assessing in here, so yeah. I'll uh, will I write out the equilibria and label which one goes with which? Maybe. Depends on the form of the question. So I might list them. I might say the 3 pKa is R2.15, 7.2, And then you would send them up. Let's titrate. The lab handouts used to say, give your graph a meaningful title. <coughs> I, just, I, just, I don't think, I mean, how much does that really mean to me? I think I changed it to informative or descriptive or title, whatever. The idea is that from this graph, between the title and the labels and the axes, the reader could tell exactly what you did, what the volume was, what the concentrations of each chemical were, if it's known. Where does my pH start if I have a solution of phosphoric acid? Where? Low. That's right. It's an acid, so the pH starts somewhat low. It's mark seven. Okay, I'm running along. I'm getting buffered. Oh man, I'm running out of buffer. How many equivalence points should you see? You should see three because there are three protons to come off. The last one is at a pretty high pH and sometimes you don't see it. Um, there are at least two technical reasons for that, but the practicality is you don't always see the third one. Ducolo's point is in the middle of the sharply rising, the most sharply rising What is the meaning of the equivalence point? You lost a proton? Well, the, yeah, so the equivalence, Natalie said you lost a proton. Yeah, that's what happens there. Or you gained a proton if you're coming the other direction. The equivalence point is where moles of, in this case, base added. equal initial moles of acid. And it is exactly like Natalie said, what you have for the most part over here is H3PO4, because that's what you put in the beaker. What do you have for the most part at the equivalence point? What chemical is in solution? Yeah, you could describe it as a salt if you want, but the acid base chemical is H2PO4 minus with the charge balanced by whatever counter ion you titrated with. Right. And at the next equivalence point you do that again.
Um, and the, for labeling in the lab course, you don't need to put the chemicals. I think it's useful to think about what chemicals are dominant as you go through this, but you don't have to for the labeling purposes. You are asked, however, to label the buffering regions. What does it mean to buffer? Say it. Yeah, that's one way to think about it. It's leading up to the equivalence point, but the pH is changing more slowly. Right around the equivalence point, that's when, so pH is the y-axis, that's when the pH is changing most quickly. That's an unbuffered region. Buffer region is where the pH is changing more slowly. Um, you can circle them, you can sort of bracket them, you can do whatever you want. Buffer region. Anywhere where pH is changing slowly. And these graphs, if you try and label them, uh, if you add all the chemicals in, it gets pretty messy, pretty, uh, pretty busy. We'll talk a lot more about buffers in the next chapter. We'll see if we get to that today. I'm going to do a bunch of practice. But here's sort of the starting of the buffer region is where the pH is changing. Or something like they are. They, these are. Uh, um, these take a little. You mean these two chemicals? Yeah, they are. One has, the first one has one sodium, two protons, the second has two sodium, one proton. They look, re they're visually really similar, so you have to go slow. Okay. Let's practice. Oh yeah, Ken. So how you said um, for the third equivalence point, it's too high that we don't see it on the graph. Yeah. Would that also be like a diacritic one, the second one, two, So the Camden's question is, it, uh, my comment, if I get this right, my com one of my comments was, the third B, the third equivalence point you might not see, because it's high. Would that also be true for a diacritic acid? My answer is, it depends on what the pKa is more than on how many protons there are. So what was that third pKa? That was 12.32. That is where water itself starts to buffer as you get close to 14, and pH probes stink above pH 10 or 11. So even if it's measuring, your probe may not be able to pick it up. Um, but it depends on what the pKa is versus water, the 0 and the 14, rather than on how many there are. That's a good question. So sometimes it might be there, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it might be there, sometimes it won't, dependent on how your probe <laughs> is working that day, basically. Um, for PKAs that are 12 or higher. For carbonic acid, you should see it. Hmm. So here's a bunch of practice problems. I think that we should keep going into buffers and start with this next one. Okay, let's do that. pH is what I measure about a solution. pH 
Okay, it is a parameter of a model. Let's set up the K A equation. And by that, I mean Oh dear. Okay, let's try that again. This is an equilibrium constant. You will find a value. Usually it's given as a PKA, but it has its own number. Which means, well, actually, what does that mean? What does it mean for that equilibrium products or reactants to equal a number? I would say it just it mathematically means that when you multiply and then divide those numbers, it will equal the equilibrium constant. So it sort of sets up the ratio of what you will find. If you know three out of four of these variables, you can calculate the last one. But what if you look at the case where AJ equals A minus? What happens to this equation? They drop out. And Ka, in that case, equals H3O plus. What if I took the negative log of both sides, which is something I arbitrarily do pretty often in this section? Yeah. When you have equal concentrations of HA and A minus, the acid and the conjugate base, then PKA equals PH. PH equals Where do you find that on a titration curve? Of what? Say it again. Ah, so what if there's a coefficient? There won't be. So in a a pKa is for one specific reaction, and I don't know if this is necessarily true or if it just happens to be, but it's always one. The coefficients are always one. It's a good question. Now my most even titration curve, but what am I going to do? Similar curve to what I drew before for the labeling discussion. Remember when I labeled what chemicals were dominant in each section? I put H3PO4 in the flask. Therefore, at the lower left, H3PO4 is what dominates. I'll label that as HA. 
What do you have at the equivalence point? A minus, because you added enough base to convert it all to the base. Where is HA equal to A minus? Halfway. Halfway in between those two. And so, whatever pH you find there, that's peak A. This is the, the most straightforward way to measure a peak A. This is the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. Most people abbreviate it HH equation because that's faster. pH equals pKA plus log of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. Uh, the book goes through how to derive this from the equations for, well, the, the Ka equation. It's pretty clever. It's an uh, algebraic rearrangement of what we already did for Ka, but we won't go through it if you're curious if you want to book it over This is a very, very, very <coughs> useful equation. Sometimes you'll get the classic equation with one variable type of problem. Sometimes you'll be asked for something different. The most common variables you may be asked for are pH, pKa, A minus, HA, or the ratio of A minus over HA. So you're solving for basically the whole fraction in the log term. Pick one, please. The hardest. I don't know, what's the hardest? Let's do the ratio. I actually think that's the easiest. They're all about the same. <laughs> Let's go back to Catacall. So she's got a call. What is the, that's pretty poor handwriting there, but what is the ratio? A minus over HA. What do you do? You set up the equation and you solve for it. I don't know. Let's see. pH is 11.25. pKa was 9.45. And that is the log of A minus over HA. Subtract 9.45 from both sides. Tend to the
two sig figs, two sig figs. Ratio. So which chemical is there more of under these conditions? The acid or the conjugate base? Conjugate base. The ratio is larger than one. The fraction is big, which means the top number, the A minus, is bigger. There's more base. Does that make sense? Compare the pH and the pKa. Remember, the P, if the pH equals the pKa, it's 50-50. Are you more acidic or more basic than that from a pH point of view? pH was 11. 11.25. I am more basic than the pKa. So we should have more base. And we do. There are many, many, many variations on the henderson nasselbach equation because it is useful in many situations. So we'll do a lot of practice. The lab has quite a few practice problems. The buffers worksheet, and that's got a lot of practice on it. So this is good. You will see many of the different types of categories within henderson nasselbach Are there questions or thoughts so far on the equation itself in general? The terms in it? Anything? Hi. You now know how to do acid base, I would say, in its entirety. You do pH of strong acids and strong bases. You did the pH of weak acids and weak bases. You did the pH and other parameters of buffer. And we started labeling titration plots. Here are two problems. Both are buffers. Let's do the first one. The second problem, the second problem is like a, if you can do this, then you're totally ready. The second problem is probably more than I would give you on an exam just for the sake of time, but it's a very realistic no more problem. If you can do it, then you're going to go. Have you heard of the question? Oh. Okay. All right, so let's try the first one. You want want very badly. A solution of pH 4.00. How many moles of sodium lactate should you add to a solution that contains 0 0.10 moles of lactic acid? Lactic acid pKa equals 3.86. What kind of problem is this? How would you know? What's that? So ice table is one way to do it. It's a problem that we just learned how to do. Yeah, context is useful. No doubt. No doubt. I see a pH and a pKa. So I immediately start thinking weak acid, ice table, because it says acid. However, I did an ice table. That was the most expedient way to go when I just had one chemical, when I had a solution of a weak acid. Here, I will want a solution of weak acid and sodium lactate. What is that? Yeah, it's the conjugate base, and you're going to want to know the ratio. 
So I see both HA and A minus. If I see both HA and A minus, I have a buffer. If I see buffer, I start to ask myself, can I do this with Henderson Hausmann? Ice tables will work, but it takes longer. The, really, the power of Henderson Hasselbach is not that it does anything new per se, but it's a tremendous time saver if you have a buffer. Because it saves you from doing at least one, maybe two nice things. Try this one. Need the concentration. You just gave me moles here. Great question. I'll come back up in a second, but let me work Henderson Hasselbach here. Henderson Hasselbach was pH was pKa plus log of uh, A minus over HA. What are the units for A minus? Yeah, moles per liter. Fantastic. So moles of A minus over liter of solution in particular. What are the concentration for HA? Moles of HA over liter of solution. Ready? Ready? Bam! So that's the mathematical way to do it. The the takeaway is you can use Henderson Hasselbach either with concentrations, as long as it's the same solution, or with moles. Because they're going to be consistent. You can't really fix it. Mole, mole, molar, molar. In fact, moles is often a really good way to go. Mole. 
I get 0.14 moles. What'd you guys get? Yeah? Okay. Questions or thoughts? Can you write it out? Okay, write it out. Yep. <clears throat> Coincidence? <coughs> well, I guess I knew what HA was, right? Man, I'm making all sorts of mistakes here, and that was moles of A minus. What does a buffer do? I would so I also use the word slow. So now he said it slows down the reaction. I also use the word slow, but it's a little bit misleading even what I do too, because it's not a time thing per se. It but it slows the rate of change of pH as you add acid or base, typically strong acid. If you add acid, pH will change. It will go down. But if there's a buffer, it will go down less. Why? Because not all of those protons went to water to become H3, H3O+. Some of them went to the molecule. Which does not really affect pH. pH is H3O+. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. What does a buffer do in the macro sense? Buffer resists change in pH, good. On addition of acid or base. What happens if I add HCl to pure water? Yeah, all of that HCl becomes H3O+. And what is pH? pH is a negative log of H3O+. So it changed the pH, went down. Okay. But if I have a solution... to water... weak acid HA... and weak base A-, HCl is going to react. Where does that proton go? That's right. Some to H2O to make hydronium, which changes the pH, and some to A-, which becomes HA. And it changes the ratio of HA to A-, but does not in and of itself affect the pH. What is the buffer, though? The buffer is both. You do not have a buffer unless you have both H, A, and A. That's key. 
the analogy I like to give, I don't know if it makes any sense, but if you're at Thanksgiving and you have that relative that, you, that talks a lot and you don't want to listen to them, and you put your little five-year-old cousin between you at the dinner table as a buffer, so you still hear some, but you hear less. Agree to disagree. Um, anyway, that's obviously so. But this is the chemical version of that. Some of the protons go to water to make it more lower pH. Some of the protons go to anyways. Thanks. See you later.